And in this video now we're going to talk about burrs used in veneer preparations. Okay. What is the type of the burrs we're using? Diamond. 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 Usually diamond. Why? Diamond. So all bears should be diamond. Why? Because these are the most suitable for preparing enamel. It's the cutting efficiency and the morphology of the prisms after cutting. While in denting cutting age, uh, we're talking about something with the flutes, hmm. not in, as an abrasive surface. Right? We have a flutes in denting cutting in, uh, 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 tools that we are using or tips. So here we're doing diamond, always with water, okay? We're talking about the material and using the water as a coolant. So the birds come in different morphologies. Usually the most birds we have used, first of all, in my preparation, I need a bear that controls my depth. How do they control the depth? By having a cutting part non -cutting. here, non-cutting. Then another cutting, non-cutting, then another cutting, non-cutting, then they have a safe end. So they need, want not to traumatize the gingiva. How much are the depth that we have? We have a 0.3, usually the bears come in 0.3 and 0.5, okay? This is, these are the depth. These are non-cutting smooth shanks. If it touches the enamel, how does it work? You touch a surface of enamel, so this is our enamel, okay? So if I approach the enamel with this bear, it will first cut from here, so mm -hmm. Once it reaches the correct depth, the bear here does not cutting. Mm -hmm. Then I need to do a shift in the bear, so the second one will cut. Okay? Then I need to shift the bear, and the third one will cut. Okay? So the bear angulation changes. First you cut from the middle, cut gingivally, and then you cut proximally. What I prefer, if possible, if your material allows you, use this and this, if you're going to use the 0.5, use this with the 0.5 and here come with the 0.3, okay? Now, if there are some cutting uh, instruments that have a 0.5 combined with the 0.3, I don't know, okay? But uh, the idea is keep less pr uh, reduction and keep away from the gingiva at least three millimeter with your cutting gauge, okay? Because we said, at the, on average, around three millimeter, we're close to denting. So cutting gauge, make sure that uh, close to the uh, cement enamel junction that you are shallower of it. So you can use even two cutting gauges. Use this for the 0.5. Okay, this is also 0.5 and leave this as a 0.3. Okay, so these are my first cutting bar. Why do we use first cutting bar to gauge our preparation? It's it is standardized. I standardized my preparation. I could use an index, a rubber index. So once more, this is my preparation. I put rubber here, and then cut this rubber index in as a preparation guide at multiple areas. We can cut them in three. Okay, one, two, three. Three cuts, and then visually, when I have prepared this surface. I compare it visually with my index, but still my vision is not very accurate. No, point three. So this is why I need the standardized preparation birds. Okay? So this is our first cutting bird. Second cutting bird is our parallel sided or slightly tapered, but whatever. It is not important because the, we're not going to use it for the monitoring or standardizing the tilt, we're only using the surface of it for cutting. We have coarse bears. These are also diamond. They are 135 micron. Okay. And then we have fine bears for the finishing. Okay. These are 0.3, uh, sorry, 30 microns. 30 microns in terms of uh, material. Now, even those that are 135 microns, the coarse one, that they have a black band here, you remember that these have either a red or yellow bands, okay? The idea here, they have a safe tip. Once more, they have here 30 micron. So even if they are coarse here, they have a safe tip. And these also have a safe tip. Why do we need safe tip bears? Because we are close to the margin of gingiva. We don't want to traumatize it. Okay? 
What other birds we can use? There are some birds that I've seen that they call it incisor limiting birds. Okay, it's just something like this, or it can come with like this, whatever, but this is the only cutting edge of it. Okay, there is a 1.5, there is a 1, and a 2 millimeter. So you go, if this was the incisal edge, you go with this bear, it will cut a slot like this, and this part is smooth, so it will not cut. So it will be safe. So you ensure that the depth is diff is corresponding with the bear that you're using. How much you want to prepare. Okay. So these are the bears. Then we have a final thing that we should include in our veneer preparation kit is a disc. It's a thin disc. Once more, it has abrasive material on it. It has a safe side. Why need a safe side? Because I don't want to damage the adjacent tooth. And it has a cutting side. Why do I need to have this? Whenever I'm pressing veneers, even if I'm leaving the contact area, I should come and open the contact area with this disc. It's very minimal preparation. It's like in emery shaping. Why do I need this? Because the technician needs to separate the dies inside when he's working. So if teeth are in contact, suppose this is like the central. If ah, if they can have spacing, I don't need that part. But suppose we have very tight contacts from coming from the canines. Okay, so tight contacts, if I leave it, I prepared my veneer, but if I leave this tight contact, okay, the technician on the cast could not separate the dice. So they recommend that you come in with the disc here. You could use the disc, it's like a disc on a mandrel, or there are some abrasive saws, like an abrasive strip. It's like a saw. It has a cutting part to it here if to cut in between. And then it has uh, one surface that has an abrasive. So you begin cutting and just enough to let this go in. This is just enough to go in the contact area to open it. It's like an amateur shaping. Why? Because the technician needs to separate the dies on the cast. Okay. If he is going to do veneers for full teeth without cutting in the contact. No, <laughs> it's not covered by veneer because the veneer preparation, you ended your veneer preparation away from those uh, uh, contact area. Okay, yes. Okay, veneers are prepared only here. You don't go to the contact. But why do you need to open the contact to separate things? Okay, so this is in part of your work. Okay, these are the birds in the veneers uh, preparation and uh, the sequence that we use them uh, quickly. Uh, I'm not going to do a demo on how to prepare veneers. Really, the internet is very, very rich with these videos. They are very beautiful. They concentrate on your preparation, uh, how to prepare and how they, uh, they, they pay a lot of attention on how to polish the preparation after you finish. So some you will find some videos where they, they finish the work with the white stone. Stone. Some of them will use the, uh, the uh, polishing disc. Okay, polishing tip, maybe the round polishing tip. Some of them use the disc, polishing discs. Some of them will tell you to use something like a rag. It's like a rag wheel. It's a wheel made of rubber, but put in a, a like a rag shape. And this rubber rotates and you polish the surface of the tooth. Okay, so they concentrate a lot on finishing of the preparation very well because that will help you take accurate impressions.